This is Deborah Atkinson. Welcome to the Flipping 50 Show, where I address your top questions and the things you struggle with most so you can have more energy and less decision fatigue about what to eat, how to move, and you can change your thoughts to Flip 50 with the life and the energy you love in this second half. So you may have noticed, everyone, that there was no music over the intro today. So literally, self-disclosure, I am flying by the seat of my pants. So I'm actually recording this on the very morning that I am going to immediately publish. So I have been caught with, we could say, my hand in the cookie jar, but I don't have a cookie jar without a podcast for today. So we are kind of entering fall and ending the Summer Inspire series. However, if you are listening to this and you feel even that little inkling that you are an inspirational story for somebody else that's listening, you've experienced a turning the corner kind of an aha moment, and maybe you have actually had some real physical challenges and overcome them, I'd still love to hear from you. But what I'm going to do right now is share some great news. So if you read the title and you were enticed, Eat Carbs and Lose Weight, The Over 50 Dream, you get it, right? So we are actually talking about this. Here's the reason why. We may want to keep the door open. There are so many diet trends out there paleo definitely being one, um, anything low carb, you know, back to the 90s or um, probably the 90s is where it was more popular, the Atkins diet. And, and now looking at keto and uh, it, it's very reminiscent of the Atkins diet for anybody who went through that. And they're pretty void of carbohydrates and taking a look at intermittent fasting, similar but different. So if you tend to be an overachiever, this might be true of you. You're, you're flirting with paleo, you're flirting with keto, and you've picked up this and that, and now you're actually adding it to intermittent fasting. As a midlife female, maybe you're backing yourself into a corner and here's how you know. So if you're failing at your low carb diet, you're depressed. Actually, you're finding yourself more moody. And even if you're not, say, on a prescription, haven't gone to a doctor, don't have a diagnosis, but you just are moody. And I'm not talking about the afternoon, I'm hangry because it's time to eat and I'm trying to cut back and my hormones are taking a dive, meaning Cortisol, which is your energy hormone, is lower at that time of day. So you're really vulnerable to the vending machine or whatever might be at the counter at the gas station and or walking in the door at that time. And maybe your willpower is also shot. Those all come into play. But if you can't sleep, you, you have a little sign or symptom of depression or maybe you are on an SSRI, which is a, a serotonin medication given to people who are flirting with depression and or anxiety. Sometimes it's given in the same case. And if you find yourself, you're failing at that low carb diet, it just, you can't do it. You get on it for a while and then you just cave and you can't do it. Stop right there. It's not your fault necessarily you may need the serotonin solution. And carbs, in part, help you calm down, improve the state of mind, and can enhance your sleep. All things that help you lose weight. So yeah, how backwards is that? Eat carbs in order to sleep better, in order to improve your hormone profile and lose weight. All right, so it's a dream, right? <laughs> but it may actually be true. And realize this, every one of you listening right now is not exactly the same. That is where we get in trouble going on, you know, when people ask, what's the best diet? And you choose to go on a diet. 
that is kind of built for the masses and it's say quote unquote generic, you probably need to co-create. You need to collaborate. Take a look at pieces of a diet that work and take a look at first your need, your need for energy, your need for mood, your need for cognitive performance. If you are somebody who has to do a lot of fast, rapid decision making at work, you've got to function and you may need more carbohydrates than the next person in order to do that. So be open to that possibility. But the serotonin solution refers to the fact that women, we are more sensitive overall to serotonin-based swings in our mood. We really can notice a drop. So you may be more sensitive than your best bud or your sister or your mom for that matter. And here's how you'll know. If we've got too many gray days, we have cloud, overcast, the sun doesn't come out. If you notice your mood drops significantly, and I'm not saying just, you know, a little bit, because I think we all can have that tendency day in, day in. You'll hear people on the radio talking about it, right? How we're all affected. We need to see the sun. And yet I'm talking, you know, even one cloudy day makes a difference for you or you're stuck inside at work and you don't get outdoors. You don't even have exposure to window light, which can also make a big difference. If you notice that you've definitely reached a low more than someone else, then you're probably a little bit more what we call a high sensitive person. Okay. It is a thing truly, but serotonin is something that you can get not just from sunshine, sunshine, excuse me, but you can get it from a good laugh or you can get it from venting with a friend taking a walk um, or your favorite exercise. So if walking is something you've got knees or ankles that are hips that won't allow you to do that, maybe that's not your jam because it's painful. But exposure to all of those is like the trilogy of, you know, your own little exercise pill, if you will. It's long been my advice to make a date with a friend, take a walk or, or bike ride, substitute your exercise in sunshine. That trilogy is the equivalent of a serotonin generating drug. Now, if you're on one, don't go off just because Deborah recommends that, but it is so much better than any pill. And the real purpose of an SSRI, which is a serotonin type medication that's prescribed, generally it's for depression. It also might be for anxiety. Quite often, the same drug is prescribed for either or, which may seem slightly odd given depression seems like it's down, mood is really low, anxiety means it's like heightened, but it's still you know, a low type of a mood. Your functioning is impaired. It's meant to be a temporary solution so that your adapting lifestyle habits and changes so your body can then begin to generate its own serotonin. So while you're using that prescription drug, and it's, it may be situational and it may be more long-term and you may need to stay on it, but some people say post-grief, maybe on something with serotonin in it because it's a significant time in their life and there's a lot of emotional swings and you need a little extra support. We can't always do it for ourselves. But during that time, the goal is then to seek support through friends or maybe through therapy to get exercise that helps to boost serotonin as well as endorphins. But the real key here is serotonin and, you know, get exposure to sunshine letting your body do it, and starting to regulate diet. That's where the carbs come in. So today, in the Flipping 50 blog, I you can go to flipping50.com for August 15, 2017. I address some of the ways that you can begin to regulate your own biometrics. That is, your, your biological markers of 
depression, mood state, anxiety. So the goal would be, if you think of a continuum, anxiety on one end, depression on the other end, there's a sweet spot where you're on, right? You're alert, you're able to be productive, and you're not so on, right? Which would kind of be toward the anxiety side of things. Your body, you know, can learn how to handle and how to regulate. I address some of those ways that you can begin to regulate your own biometrics. Things like heart rate, you're in control, your breath rate, your mood, blood pressure, and I have a way to track them. So forgive me, right now I'm going to take a little side path, and if this sounds like an infomercial, I'm letting you know right now, I realize that might be the case. But here's my disclaimer. I am promoting a new product. I have joined this bandwagon because I love it. I am not a tech geek by any means. I never jumped on the bandwagon as far as, um, you know, the ever popular Fitbit, which I think is wonderful. It's just not something in my bandwidth. I took me a long time, but I began using a heart rate monitor and really resisted for a long time because as I went out for a run for the longest time, about 25 years, I did not use an iPod. I, I used nothing outside of a watch. And I'm telling you, you know, like I would start at 10 a.m. and go to 10.30 or 10.45, that was it. You know, it wasn't looking at my breath rate or my distance, nothing. Simple, simple, simple. And when I started using technology, I felt like I was hardwired and I was carrying all this stuff. Soon began to love it. <laughs> it it's addictive. So I did learn the value of training with a heart rate, you know, identifying, you know, what my distance is and how much that actually motivated even me, that person who would just as soon go on a trail run and, you know, just go until I was done and come back. But this new product, and the reason I love it, it's called the Helo, and it does track breath rate, heart rate, mood, blood pressure. It will very soon, the product now, not for additional costs, it will very soon track blood glucose, even blood alcohol, if you want to keep yourself safe off the roads and, you know, prevent... Um, any tickets from coming up. It has so many other features, but those are just a few of them. And those are a few that heart rate goes up when you're stressed. Breath rate goes up when you're stressed. Mood, obviously, is the reflection of that. It will tell you where you're at. Blood pressure goes up when you're stressed. You, through a few activities, can control those things. So, and in this case, your best fitness and health tracker on steroids. That's really what this Hilo is like. You won't find it in stores. It's not available there. I do represent, so let me say this, you'll find the link to go look at it. It is a little bit more expensive than most trackers. It's about the same rate as some of the best trackers, but it does about 14 more things than most trackers will do for you. In fact, if you have an aging parent living alone, by pressing the emergency response, you can do two things. They can alert EMS or you can be alerted first if you are using the same app. So you can be very connected to your family members and find out if they are tracking and tracking well. So let me say this. I'm not the first one to jump on the bandwagon when something new comes along. Point and check. Took me 30 years of swearing I would never promote protein products before I realized that it was a responsible thing to do. When 50% of randomly tested protein products off the shelf in your store have arsenic in them or they have artificial sugars, they're high in fructose, which is natural sugar, but it encourages you to store fat. They have soy and dairy, all of which can make you store fat easier and or be a food allergen for you, a food sensitivity 
that makes you resistant to weight loss. So the irony here is the very thing that you may be reaching for if you don't have enough education beyond you need more protein to know what's in that label that you don't want in your body. My goal was twofold. Number one, to start educating. And once I did, I had people saying, well, how do I get it? Do you have one? And I thought, no, I don't. And I thought, why don't I? So that's why I did this, just to point out the illustration of why I think it is responsible when you find there are people who are promoting something, telling you about something, and they stand to gain. That's exactly what this is to instance is. So I want to be totally transparent, but I'm always reminded of this statement from, I think, um, I don't know who said it originally, and I wish I did, but it comes from the movie National Treasure, and I think the original one, and it is, you know, if you can see that you have the ability to help, you have the responsibility to help, and that's my mission or my GPS, if you will, for deciding to get on the bandwagon. So that's where I'm at. All right. So a lot of times, you know, people are promoting products and they don't know enough about what they're doing. They don't have enough background. They may not intentionally be doing it, but what I've noticed is that when people begin to gain awareness, when they have been informed and educated, they don't necessarily stop doing it because there is too much looking around going, well, they're doing it. They're still promoting it. And so as long as they are, I'm not going to stop. I don't think that's the right answer, but I digress. So let's go back to Hilo and tracking just for a second and back to carbs. All right. So let's talk about you're not really surprised, are you, that that you need carbs? And I know so many people listening right now are relieved as we have people go through the program, the 28-day kickstart. And I'll put the link to that below the show, show notes. We are talking about the right type and the right timing of carbohydrates that actually helps boost weight loss, fat loss, energy, and you know, ultimately, if you're doing all those things, mood, right? And it starts with mood. So who listening, right? Doesn't love a good piece of bread or the basket. Right? Who couldn't destroy a basket of tortilla chips and feel the need for a confession just thinking about fettuccine Alfredo, right? And yeah, it's cream maybe, but it is definitely the comfort food in our carbs, it's one of the biggest conundrums of dieting in this past decade. Goes like this: stop eating carbs, lose weight, get depressed, lose sleep, gain weight. That's pretty much the path that so many of us, so many women in midlife who get to me confused about what do I eat? You know, this is what I was doing and it worked for a while, right? It always works for a while, or you can always be quote unquote good for a while, and then you can't. And that's where, you know, finding a little bit slower path, probably, because I'll tell you what, if you stop eating carbs right now, it's Tuesday as I'm recording this, by Friday or Saturday, you will be down several pounds. You will feel like you're lighted, less bloated. But if you ever, ever start eating carbs again, you will put on that weight because here's why. In the short term, you store one part carbohydrate and three parts water. So if you have a little bit of a, you have a piece of toast, and I'm not advocating that, just giving an example, or you have, say, a sweet potato, even high quality carbs, you're going to store, you know, one part carb, three parts water. So of course, not in a bloated way, but your body is carrying around a little bit more water. It actually probably needs that water, just saying. So you don't want to be dehydrated. That's not a great way to walk around because that's also going to put you in a state of mind where you can't function very well cognitively, mood-wise or emotion-wise. It's not really going to work. 
So think about that path again. Has this happened to you? You stopped eating carbs or you cut them back severely. You lost weight. Yay, right? You think that's great. And then your mood changes. You get depressed. You start losing sleep. When you're depressed, you can't sleep very well and you gain weight because when you're not sleeping, the hormones that help you keep lean or get lean if you need to get there in the first place and that help you burn more fat instead of storing more fat, when you're sleeping well, those things are in great check. They're in balance. When you start losing sleep, those hormones that cause you to store fat are increased. And the hormones that cause you or help you to burn fat by creating more lean muscle are decreased. They're in absence and they're not going to help you any. So you've got things working against you. If sleep is not there, it would be my first focus for you. You have to sleep to regulate hormones that help boost fat burning and decrease fat storage. You, in fact, you want to be a rock star at sleep. And if you're listening right now and you're saying, I've never been a good sleeper, you, I'm going to suggest, need to stop saying that. You need to ask yourself when you're making those statements, do I want that to be true? Because the more you say it, the more you send that message to your brain, what you say to yourself matters. So you could say, you know, in the past, I haven't been a great sleeper, but I'm going to focus on why that's true because we all came out good sleepers, you know, or yeah, I'd like to always think my son was the exception, but it wasn't that he wasn't a good sleeper, just wasn't sleeping the right time or duration for me. It's all about me. And he liked to graze, right? But most of us babies sleep, you know, upwards of 14 or more hours a day, you know, more when they first come out, we were all good at it for a while. So what we have to figure out is where do things go wrong and get back to all of the things that can help us. Eating carbs makes you release serotonin. That has a calming and relaxing effect on you. It's, it's happiness, yes, but it's happiness with calm. So you'll sleep better if you have optimal serotonin. Women are more prone to depression than men. And after the age of 50, and and probably every decade as we age, women are more prone to depression than men, and and in part due to serotonin. But when you think about what happens, you know, do you exercise as much? Do you connect with your friends as much? You know, are you as social? Are you exposed to sunshine as much? So if you're limited in your ability to get out or be mobile, obviously those things change. And if you lose a partner, women are more likely to lose their life partner than are men, you know, who live longer. Men generally still have their partner because she is slightly younger and, you know, she's going to live longer than he is. Not that that's starting to even out, but that's been historically the case. Carbs are not your enemy. The right carbs at the right time will help you burn more fat during exercise, feel happier and more calm. And that right there is a prescription for weight loss. It happens in this order. Feel happier, get happier, lose more weight. And and that happens in so many ways. So on so many levels, one being you decrease your cortisol when you're happier. Now your stressors, the things that cause it, don't go away. If you have a meaningful life, you've heard me say this, you're going to have stress. So if you have a meaningful job, something that gives you purpose, you're going to have stress. And even if it's your boss hanging over your head and you're you know, feeling that um, you're being bullied at work. If you feel like the purpose you serve in that job is big enough, you may not be nearly as stressed if you can connect to that purpose. Your why you're there. Why in that particular job is it necessary for you to be there? Maybe it's to offset 
that kind of an environment created by that specific person. And we're going kind of down a tangent here, but, you know, coming back to what else happens. So looking at you happier, decreasing cortisol, helping you lose weight because too much cortisol causes you to store it, prevents your metabolism from helping you burn more. So get happy, then lose weight. It's not lose weight, then get happy. So ultimately, those things will also help you sleep better. You're peaceful during the day. You're going to be more peaceful at night. So the key is which carbs and which ones at the right time really make it right. So we, we've we talked about slow and low carbs. I address this very much in You Still Got a Girl, the book, and in the After 50 Fitness Formula for Women, the online course, as well as the 28-Day Kickstart, the right carbs. If you can trust for 28 days even, you'll see a difference and most likely feel a difference. You're on a continuum somewhere. You're not exactly the same as me. You're not exactly the same as your bestie or your spouse or other people may be sitting at your table. So you've really got to test, you know, are you highly sensitive to carbohydrates? And if you are, you may need to limit your high sugar fruit, for instance, and focus on berries and citrus fruits that are lower in sugar, but highest in nutrients, but primarily spend your time in veggies. No one ever overdosed on veggies. So non-starchy vegetables, the deeper the color, the better, but also, you know, onions, cabbage, mushrooms are high quality in nutrients that you don't get from all of the other ones. And you want to be sure you're not defaulting to the same, same, same. Leafy, green leafy vegetables, spinach, wonderful, but not every day, not multiple times a day. You need to switch that out for kale, for microgreens, for baby lettuces, or for romaine. And yes, some of those are deeper in color than others. And you may think, well, I've always been told spinach is the best. But the rotation allows you to get more of the positives and none of the negatives. Even spinach can be toxic. So do the same with deeply colored vegetables. You may love carrots, but you want to alternate them and make sure you're having asparagus, green beans, you're having beets, you're having, um, when you get to starchy potatoes, looking at sweet potatoes a little bit more often than white potatoes, although white potatoes are not bad. So it's looking at when and why and how that's really important and testing yourself to be sure that you've got it. So if I've stirred a pot here and if you'd like to submit a question, leave it below the show link at flipping50.com forward slash podcast. Join us on the Flipping 50 TV Facebook page. And if you enjoy the show, I would love it if you'd leave us a rating in iTunes and then share this with a friend and surround yourself with a supportive community of women who are on the same journey. You'll find all the links to Hilo, to the programs I mentioned in the show notes today. And by all means, please leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. What are you waiting for? Let's start flipping 50 today.